Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, why don't you hit the little subscribe button for us? It really does help us out. Do you have a Nintendo Switch that doesn't seem to be charging anymore, and you're wondering if it's the battery or something else? Well, unfortunately, the Nintendo Switch is a little on the fragile side. Both its USB-C port and the internal circuitry can be damaged by aftermarket chargers. And neither one of those is really a hobbyist level service point. But in this video, we'll look at a switch that was damaged from an aftermarket charger, and we had to replace the surface mount charge control IC. So why don't you stick around and we'll show you how to get it done. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today on the bench we have a Nintendo Switch. It came to us a little bit as a basket case. The, um, you know, we got a bag of parts. Looks like the SD card reader and some screws. And I've already noticed um, the kickstand's missing and, and the parts are loose. So I'm gonna take the loose parts and just kind of set them aside. Looks like the thermal paste has been messed up a bit, but we'll, we'll address that later. Most of these aren't old enough yet to have the paste being hard. Now, the problem was, is the owner said it wouldn't start. So before we even attempt, well, that would do it. So let's, let's just plug this battery in. Let's see if we get anything from this. Okay. We got the splash screen and the low battery indicator and it completely went off. So it's not dead, but he said it wouldn't turn on at all. So we're already farther ahead than the owner thinks. Uh, I guess we should get an inspection. We should see if this is charging. Okay. We need a Nintendo cord. Let's plug in our Nintendo cord. And I always try to use an actual Nintendo charger. These do have a tendency of uh, being a little temperamental, um, especially if you use a non-standard charger. Okay, flip it over just for giggles. We're not getting anything. Nothing on the board's getting hot. Let's plug in a power meter, see if we get anything. Okay, the meter's not coming on at all. So, I guess we know why it's not coming on. It's not charging. Okay, so, at least we know where to start. Let's disconnect this battery again. And the battery connector just lifts straight up on these. It's, it's not a big deal, but they're kind of glued into the socket. So the first thing we need to do is just a visual inspection. Let's see if there's anything melted or broken or visually wrong or you know things like these uh, water indicators uh, to see if they've gotten wet inside. I don't see any indication of anything getting wet. You know, a lot of times if we have a, a switch, somebody spills soda or some kind of drink down into the top, it gets in through the cartridge slot and the headphone jack, and we start, you know, we'll see corrosion here. I really don't. It might be a little dirty, but I don't see any real corrosion. Um, there's nothing blown or melted that we can see. Okay, so our next step is to disassemble it and get this board out. Okay, 
we got the main board out. So now let's take a look at the back side. There is no obvious physical damage. Okay. So our next step is to get it under the microscope. All right, so we got the microscope out and the first thing we wanna do is look at this USB-C connector. Um, it's a little bit worn, but none of the pins are ripped up. So, okay, so we're, we're, we're good there. Uh, okay, so one of the first things we're gonna wanna check <clears throat> is we need to figure out why this isn't charging. Just behind the USB-C connector, there is a very small fuse. And that's the first thing we're gonna wanna look at. All right, so our fuse is good. The next thing we want to look at is this guy here. That is this M92T36 is our charge control. So when these fail, a lot of times uh, they'll show shorts on the capacitors. So this side of the cap, you know, should be ground. This side's going to the chip and we're good. And we're good. Same thing here. All three of this, these, you know, this back side goes to ground. And this side, you know, there we go. All right, we've got a short on this center capacitor. So that leads me to believe that our charge chip has gone bad. I'll check the other ones real quick. Okay, so it's just this one here. <sighs> okay, and to give you guys an understanding of how small of a part we're doing, I don't know if you can see that or if it's even focusing, but it's those teeny, teeny little gray chips beside my fingernail. Um, all right, so, so that's where we're at. So we might as well look at changing, changing out that charge chip. Okay, we actually had these uh, on the shelf uh, because it kinda, it's kind of a common issue. Um, the, the big problem is, is people that use a non-standard Nintendo charger. Um, some of these chargers for phones and whatnot are the wrong protocol. Some are fine, some aren't. Um, and you can see that actually in its little packaging, you know, how small of a chip we're dealing with here. It's truly microscopic. Um, and so are the connections. So even working with just, you know, getting them out is a chore. Especially with static. <laughs> okay, so here's our new chip. M92T36, M92T36, okay. We'll set that one aside for a moment. And we need to add a little flux. Turn off our meter for now.
the flux just helps, even in desoldering, the flux helps transfer heat and to get things flowing. In our, um, just to let you know, this does use uh, the lead-free solders. So <clears throat> we have the temperature on our heat gun the whole way up at 480 Celsius. And I have the little five millimeter nozzle on it. Airflow down a little bit. We don't want to knock components off the board. Switch hands. These lead-free solders just take an absolute ton of heat. Now, the other thing we gotta make sure is we didn't knock any other components away. This is very close working conditions. Next thing we want to do is put some leaded solder We're going to need more heat on this station too Okay.
Okay. That cleans up our uh, board pretty well. Let me turn the heat back down on our soldering station. Um, there's a few ways we could go about putting the new chip on the board. Um, we could use the hot air station to flow it in place. Um, some people like to touch up the tips with just um, the soldering iron and flow it in as they align it. But, you know, for these little guys, I almost always just, just uh, use the soldering station or use the hot air station. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is clean up our old flux. Oh, and I guess before we get too excited, we should uh, see if the short left the board yet. There's no reason to put that chip back on if, if we still have a short. All right, so it was this top center and look at that our shorts gone good 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 <coughs> all right so now the next thing we want to do is get some fresh leaded solder down on those pads see it Make sure we don't have any bridges at this point. We can simply pull them off. And, okay, all our bridges are gone.
Okay. The board's prepped. Now, since we have lead free solder, or leaded solder on there, we can turn our hot air station back down a bit. I think it's off a little bit, but we'll give it a second. We can get a better inspection. Looks like we're actually centered up. Okay. It looks like all the pins are soldered too. So, okay. So we are centered up pretty good, but we do have a little bridge right there. So let's just go ahead and take care of that. And if our soldering tip is clean, we should just be able to pull that off like that. Okay. Okay. That's looking pretty nice. So now the big question Is the short still gone? Get back to our meter. And let's see, it was on the center. How about that? Our short's gone. Okay. <coughs> now, you know, since we did heat this board up, I just wanna make sure nothing got knocked out of place. That cap got moved a little bit. The, the one right here, you can see it. But it's fine. It's not too far, too far off. It's still on our pads. Let's see what happens when we plug this in. Oh, very nice. Jumped up to a tenth of an amp. Where's our battery? Point four amps. 
looks like we're charging. So I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this and I think we're gonna have a happy customer. All right, our switch is all back together. I figured you guys didn't wanna see that. There's a lot of videos out on the internet about building, disassembling and reassembling a switch. So now is the moment of truth. Where'd our cord go? There's a cord, there's a screwdriver. So like I've said, the actual Nintendo cord See what we get. And we're charging. How about that? We'll give it a few minutes and uh, see if we can get it to turn back on. So we went back to this one and you can see it's jumped to 14.9 volts. So it's at the 15 volt charge set setting and we're taking 0.6 amps, um, which is good. Um, I would actually, sometimes it will, it will jump up a little higher but the charge system in a switch is actually pretty sophisticated. It will go in stages depending on where that battery is at. But when I saw it come up to 15 volts, I figured we were gonna be in luck. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see if our battery's charging and it'll come to life. All right, we got the Nintendo logo, switch logo. We're up to 0.8 volts at 15, uh, sorry, 15 volts at 0.8 amps. And there we are. Nice. Okay. Looks like we were successful in getting this guy to come back to life. So anyway, if you enjoyed the video, if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. And um, don't forget to subscribe. It really does help us. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.